Okay, so continuing on with um, the last video, I this is the part that I really wanted to talk about. My biggest advice for people that are pre-op is to really, really evaluate what your life is going to be like after surgery. And I know that sounds totally obvious, and I thought it was totally obvious when I was pre-op, but I'm serious. This is the biggest factor in your success, in my opinion. If you look at your life pre-op and you have a lot of stuff going on, like kids and a career and church and um, family outings and just if your life is really hectic, obviously that hectic life is still going to continue when you're post-op. So my advice is to figure out before you have your surgery how you're going to be able to implement your new lifestyle within that because that is going to be the biggest challenge. I thought the biggest challenge was going to be, you know, food and all these different obvious things like missing food and craving food and, you know, um, the difficulties. I mean, and yes, that is still very difficult. And that's what I'm going to talk about in a little, a little bit. But the biggest thing that I want to talk about was lifestyle changes and stuff. For me, the, the, the most difficult part of coming back to my old life after my surgery was that I had no idea how to fit myself into it again. I'm a, like I said, I'm a full-time college student. I'll tell you my university. I go to Baylor University in Texas and it's a crazy academic school. I mean, the pressure is on. Everybody, I mean, B's are like C's and A's are like B's. So unless you have a 4.5, no one thinks you're anything special because everyone there is pre-med, pre-law. I mean, it's just ridiculous, the expectations that we put on each other at that school. So take the pressures of academics and, and, and just all that, combine it with living in the dorms, which entails, you know, late nights studying and bad sleeping patterns and... Um, snacking and really crappy foods and movies and loudness and interruptions and you, you know all that stuff that comes with dorms so I have all of that plus all the stress of academics plus my social life hanging out with my friends doing the school organizations and clubs and going to school functions and football games and all of these different things plus church plus uh, family and coming home every two weeks it was just too much for me uh, Prior to the surgery, it wasn't too much just because it was part of my everyday life. But when I factored in not being able to eat with other people the same way, and then on top of all of that, the fact that I'm not telling anyone, it was just, it was crazy. It was, I, my expectations for myself were way too high. And so that's what I want to talk about is the biggest advice that I would give to you is to really, really look at your life, the way that you, that you are structuring your days and all of that and figure out how different it's going to be once you have the surgery because now little things like your friends calling you up and saying hey let's go eat at a restaurant or hey you want to go to the movies with us now it becomes this ordeal and eventually it won't become an ordeal but when you're first back home it's going to be an ordeal because all you have to think about is how you're going to schedule your day around your vitamins your protein and eating so for them to then take you out of your comfort zone, which is where you have everything portioned out in your house or whatever, is crazy. I mean, I, at first I was like, sure, I'll go to the, to the restaurant with you. I, I won't order anything, but I'll, you know, I'll hang out. But it was awful. It, it made me feel like segregated from everyone else. And it, it had so much anxiety. It was almost like a drug addict going to a friend's house where there's drugs or whatever, you know, it's the equivalent of that because you have to take it one meal at a time and one day at a time um, because you're in recovery, so to speak, of your old habits. And so you do not want to go back to that place where you're making bad decisions, but at the same time, you don't want to become a hermit. So it's this huge juggling act. And that's the biggest thing that I think some of us might not account for. So that would be my advice. And the other advice is going to be the head hunger. Prior to surgery, I knew what head hunger was. I've seen videos about it, but it's really hard to anticipate just how much that's going to affect you once you have your surgery. So that would be my second advice is really understand what you're getting into with the surgery. Um, 
your doctors are going to tell you or have told you that having the surgery will definitely suppress hunger feelings. But what that means is before when you were sitting on the couch eating and watching TV, you, your head would never tell your stomach or vice versa that it was full. And because we had to, you know, a lot of us over ate obviously and stuff, it was hard to make the mind body connection as full as hunger and when you're full and when enough is enough. Well, that's not a problem anymore. Post surgery, you're going to be full all the time, pretty much. And when you do eat, sometimes you have to force yourself to eat because you're like, eh, I'm not really hungry right now, but you know that you need to get your food in. So that's not a problem. The problem is the head hunger. And I didn't really account for this that much either because I really thought it was gonna be fine. I was like, you know, I've been on diets before, I've restricted myself, and now that my stomach isn't gonna be hungry, it should be fine. But really, it's, it's hard. And um, I would say the biggest trigger for me is smelling food. I don't know about you guys, but if I'm, you know, walking about and I smell a barbecue going, or if I smell french fries, or if I smell something sweet, it makes me crave those things just like anyone else. So it's, it's really hard because you know that you're not going to eat that thing and that you can't eat that thing because you'll get sick, but that doesn't mean that you don't want it. And being around your family and your friends who are eating things that you can't eat, it becomes, like I said, anxiety ridden. Like you have to be careful because you don't want to start developing a food complex where you're resenting people and you're obsessing over what you can't eat. So that's another fine balancing act that you're going to have to deal with. And it becomes easier as you progress to the different stages because then you feel like you're not being left out. But it's still really prevalent. I mean, a month post-op, you know, my friends are still bringing back pizzas to the dorms and still doing all these things where I'm just like, oh, I just want one bite, just one little bite. And then you can't and you talk yourself off the ledge, so to speak, but it's, I mean, it's still hard. So, um, those are the two biggest issues that I'm having post-op. And, um, the, the other one, of course, being, um, sticking with the protein and the vitamins and all of that. And I think I'm going to have to make a third video because it's, it's getting long again, but I have one more thing that I want to talk about. And I'm really sorry that I have to make all these videos and I'm going to try and figure out a way to, to make, videos in my dorm but it's it's hard because the, the walls are paper thin and I've got my roommate coming in and out with friends and we share a bathroom with the people next door so they can hear and I'm just paranoid so I'm you know I'm trying to figure out a way and I hope that I can just get over my fear and just do it you know because I, I really love posting videos and hearing from you guys and it's keeping me accountable so I'm going to figure something out. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm going to make one more video and that's it. I'll leave you alone, I promise. Uh, so thanks for watching and I'm going to make my third video right now.